Hi, in today's video I would like to explain what is the difference between the second and the third order analysis in module ASE. If we look at the manual of module ASE, we are going to see that a geometric nonlinear analysis is possible according to theory second order and theory third order. We also find the description of these two types of analysis, but I would like to elaborate it a little bit. Therefore, I have created a simple example and run it in a linear manner uh, according to second order and according to third order. But first, let's have a look at the model itself. So I will just simply open up the Sophiplus and I will present you the model done in Sophiplus. After having opened the file, let's see in detail what the model contains. First of all, the materials. I have defined material numbers 3 as structural steel with the classification of S355. I have also defined one cross section, an HEB200 section. With this section I have created a 5 meter high column and a 5 meter long beam element. The support conditions for the column is fully fixed at the bottom, whereas the support conditions for the beam are fixed at both ends against translations. But the rotations are free to occur uh, about the global Y and the global Z axis. Also it is worth mentioning what type of load I have applied and also with what, what magnitude. I have defined one load case with number 2 where I applied a point load with a value of 50 kN acting in the global X direction and also in the very same load case a negative 25 kN acting in the global Z direction. For the beam model I have applied a uniformly distributed UDL load with a value of 50 kN per meter assigned to load case 2 as well. Let's continue by exporting the model, clicking on this export button and accept all the default settings for the meshing. After some seconds the export has successfully finished and going back to SSD we will see uh, two models something like this on the screen. For the linear analysis task I have created a text input. If I double click on this text editor you will be see that I have called module ASE and set up a linear analysis in it with the command sysprobLina one can execute a linear analysis. The load case to be calculated will be a new load case number 901 in which or into which I'm going to copy in all the loads of load case 2 with factor 1. In a very similar fashion I have created the second order analysis. If I double click on the text editor we can see that the only difference is that I'm going to calculate a new load case with number 902 and also the type of the analysis is going to be TH2 which means a second order analysis. And finally for the, for the third order analysis I have created almost the very same input only the syst probe TH3 is different in this input and the load case to be analyzed will be 903. At the very end I have created an output of the results to be reviewed and also to explain the difference between the different types of analysis. So let's simply just run all these tasks by right clicking on the Sophie Plus entry and choose the calculate from option. The analysis has run through successfully, there are no warnings, no errors, so I'm just going to right click on the last task for the outputs and choose the reports from the drop down list. In the first A4 paper I have created three pictures in which I am presenting different results but the order of the analysis types is always linear TH2 and TH3 from the left to the right. For example in the very first A4 paper I am presenting at the left side of the paper the bending moment MZ along the column in the linear analysis. So if I scroll down a little bit you might be able to see that this is load case 901 
and the value of the bending moment is equal with 250 kN, which is reasonable, because I have applied 50 kN at the top of the 5 meter long column, and since it is a linear analysis, the bending moment will be 50 kN times 5 meter, which is going to give us 250 kN. In the middle picture of the first A4 paper, we can see the second order analysis result. Again, we can see the same bending moment, but the value of the bending moment is a little bit different. Why is that? It is because we have performed a second order analysis, and what will happen is that due to the horizontal loading, this node at the very top of the column is going to move in the global x direction, and I also applied a vertical loading acting in the global z direction being equal with 25 kN. So from the deflected position of the top node and also from the applied load on this node, an additional bending moment will happen and this is why we can see more bending moment than in the linear analysis. On the right side we can see the results of the third order analysis. For the very first blink, the result seems to be a, a little bit strange. The reason is the following. In a third order analysis, the full geometric stiffness of the system will be considered. This means that we have applied a horizontal load on the top node of the column, from which this node, the top node, will move in the global x direction the magnitude of the movement is going to be controlled with the geometric stiffness of the model. However, we also applied a vertical loading on the top node. So the top node will deflect also in the global z direction, again following the geometrical stiffness of the full model. So it means that the top node of the column is going to be moved in the global z direction as well a little bit. So the resultant movement or deflection or translation of the top node is not just going to be in the global x direction but it's also going to be in the global z direction and as a result our top node is going to be somewhere here where my pointer, pointer is at the moment and as you can see the lever arm of the vertical load in this case is smaller than in the second order analysis Hence, we are getting a little bit of fewer bending moment at the column bottom. Now let me show you the corresponding deflections diagram. Maybe I will go to the graphics and only look at the uh, graphics. The first one is the bending moment diagrams. The second one represents the nodal translation of the model. So we can see that in the linear analysis, the top node moved 400 and roughly 96 mm in the global x direction, whereas in the second order analysis, the very same, same node moved 527 mm. And in the third order analysis, this movement of the top node was only 521 mm. Hence, we received fewer bending moment at the bottom. Now let me show to you the deflection of the nodes in the system in the global z direction, so in the vertical direction. As you can see in the linear analysis and in the second order analysis, we have some movement in the global z direction, but we have much more deflections in the global z direction according to the third order analysis. So, to conclude, we can say that the column head follows the physically or mechanically correct path and the equilibrium is reached on the real deformed shape of the model. Okay, now let's review the result of our second model, the horizontal beam. Let's first represent the normal force diagram of the beams. In the top picture you can see the results, the normal force in the beam elements from the linear analysis. And of course the value is everywhere along the beam is equal with zero. Also the same can be said about the second order analysis. The normal force is zero everywhere. However, in the third order analysis whose results 
may look surprisingly to you, there is significant normal force along the beam element. This is again because of the consideration of the full geometric system of the model in the third order analysis. If now I, for example, present the deflection diagrams of the nodes in the three types of analysis, you will see that in the linear analysis and in the second order analysis, the deflection of the middle node is minus 35.1 mm in the global z direction. However, in the third order analysis, the deflection is a little bit smaller. And therefore, the bending moment from the very same load will be different between the second order analysis and the third order analysis, as you can see in the presented pictures. So what we conclude in this model is that in third order analysis, the vertical displacements of the nodes causes a lengthening of the original beam. Hence, the generated normal force, N, carries a part of the load and reduces the vertical deformation. Ok, this concludes this video and I hope you get a feeling about uh, the difference between the second and the third order analysis. Thank you for your attention and bye!